We're gonna fill it. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Go. Okay, hello. My name is Layton, and I'm here to talk to you about Ty Brown Pants. I'm gonna adjust my hat. Ty Brown Pants. Something that you wear quite a lot when you want to impress the ladies. I like to go up and down the tenderloin wearing my tight brown pants. Sometimes I rub my legs just so you can see how tight these brown pants are. Oh yes. Anyway, tight brown pants, it's a color that anyone can adopt. It's not owned by any sort of ethnicity that I know of. And it's not gay. You look obviously a heterosexual when you wear tight brown pants like this. I would like to finish by saying the ladies love it when you match and that all my pants are tight and brown I mean that I always match because I always have some sort of brown or brown complementary color on my chest. Time. Yes! <laughs> I make a suggestion for something you can cut. so much touching. Trees. Uh, yeah, paper, <laughs> pizza. Steel. Uh, your finger. Steel. Your paper. No steel. TVs. Somebody from the football team. Steel is a suggestion. Steel, go. Woo. So steel can be made a number of ways, but in general it starts with, first we take like these big old billets. This is like, picture a brick, only huge, made of metal. And then we throw it into a big pot that turns it into basically metal lava. And then, take that pot, and not with our hands because it's kind of hot, and we tilt it, <laughs> and then it turns into a big old thing of who knows what, we flatten it out, <laughs> boom! <laughs> and next, yeah, so we run that through a mill, here, roll expert. it up, and then we take it over to the coal mill where it gets finished up, and then you polish it, and then you polish it some more, and then you run it through another line that guess what, it polishes it some uh, on top of that. And when you're done, you got some really shiny stuff. You can look at it and be like, I'm pretty sexy. But you would do that only if you're a girl. And <laughs> then move it on down the line to make whatever you want. You want a stainless steel forks? Done. Kachunka. You want some sinks? Kachunka. You want something else? Kachunka, kachunka, kachunka. Ta da! Um, kachunka. <laughs> I like billet. Um, that I, I need a suggestion <laughs> for something you hate eating. <coughs> and octopus. Um, yes. Your mom. Ass. Cock. Cock. I heard octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I heard your mom. So I hate when they bring you the little calamari and it's like some of the little circle things, but it's got a lot of the little like the things with all the arms in it. Nobody eats that shit anyway. It's disgusting. It's way rubbery and chewy. Like, they should just cut all that out and just seriously give you a whole basket of the little rings. No little octopus parts. No nothing. Because everybody kind of, like, the guy always gets one and he's like, Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sophisticated. I eat the octopus. And it always ends up on his plate. Never eat. That's how it always goes. Nobody eats that shit. Leave it off the plate. Like, I don't know if they're, like, if maybe that's, like, the chicken wings and, like, the, the bones and the wings. Which, that's another thing. Like, why not just, why do they even do the wings and the thighs? Why not just wings? That's what everybody wants. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it should just be only wings. No thighs. That's all. That's all. <laughs> How long is it? A minute? A minute. <laughs> Woo! Uh, suggestion of uh, uh, introducing who you are. Oh, your character. Like a character? The yeah. camera doesn't. Please. So oh, like it. a character? Like I was Lego. Lego. Yeah. I was but you didn't Lego. say you were Lego. Lego. Yeah. I did. I said my name is Lego. Lego. And then you got I the touched my groin. Wait, wait. Do we have to be a character? Or a character is a suggestion. A suggestion and you character. get a suggestion and then you got are it. a character with your suggestion. Yeah, I got that for you. were asking me to be in character while I asked for the suggestion. Oh, no. Ask away. We're all straight. We're confused and dumb. I need. Your favorite word you type every day. Begin. Uh, hello, my name is... Wombat. Sorry, I'm late. ASL? Tanzania. I'm gonna go with wombats. It's ASL. Go. Yeah. Now, wombats ASL? are these amazing creatures, and they scamper about this way and that, but I've got one here in a cage for you today. Who are you? you? see it. Isn't it really cool? Now, I'm gonna introduce myself. I am Dr. Himalaya. <laughs> I go to the farthest <laughs> regions of Africa to find <laughs> the wombat. Now, some people told me these aren't really wombats, that they're some kind of monkey or something, but they've got kind of these wing thingies on the side. I think they're wombats. They're really awesome little things. Watch. You can take them, and if you dangle some grapes in front of them, they jump! 
<laughs> and then they commit suicide. <laughs> That's something I discovered at home one day when I was having the wombats over for dinner. I like to have wombats for dinner. Another type of animal <laughs> that I brought with me are the little creatures the wombat eats. These are wonky toads. If you throw the wonky toads into the audience, then the wombat is going to come and get them. Who wants, who wants a wonky toad? Me, 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 yeah, 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 and a wombat. And time. Thank God. <laughs> Can you name a profession you think I would not know anything about? Uh, dino to dino ex archaeologist. Being a mermaid. Oncologist. Uh, yeah, manager. Oncologist. I heard Project manager. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. Go. My name is Seymour Wilson, and I am an oncologist here in St. Louis, Missouri. And let me just tell you how I got into business and what our oncology is all about. Oncology is about getting a patient and spreading him open and getting deep in there and understanding exactly what's going on with your inner being. Sometimes it requires a microscope to understand the cell's formations and sometimes it requires just uh, understanding what the tissue, how the tissue is laid out. Um, at times I do an incision and take it to my back lab and, and that I have in my home just to further analyze things and my patients appreciate that because it gives them that feeling that I fully understand their illness. Uh, I've been in oncology for about 27 years and in those 27 years I've treated 16 patients and uh, I feel that I have provided those 16 patients with expertise in medicine and provided them with companionship as well. Uh, one last thing I'd like to say as, uh, uh, is that oncology, it takes a, lot, a certain personality to be an oncologist. You have to be willing to go deep deep and understand your patients, to understand what makes them tick. That was awesome. <laughs> nice. Wow. Thanks. College is a cancer doctor. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> uh, can I get a cancer sport that has never been invented before, that's never been played? Possibly. Who, who take labels? Back football. Uh, Grandma football. <laughs> Human Finish. juggling. Possible juggling. Pocket pools. Possible awesome juggling. Juggling. Uh, track scratching. How fast can you skin your uh, monkey? Butt scratcher? Eating, eating. Trends, Throwing chickens. Donuts. Throwing chickens. Nursing home. Throwing fish. chickens. Going on. It's going twice. Throwing <laughs> chickens. Astounding as Go. Ladies. So Ooh, yes, uh, here at ESPN it is now for the history hour where we will discuss <laughs> the, the history of the sport, chicken tossing. As you can see, chicken tossing began in the 1800s. In the 1800s, this is when the Mayans used to use chickens as holy gods. When they soon found out that the chickens would lay eggs and they could consume them for protein, they ended up killing them and actually <coughs> using them for sport. Now, in the beginning, the Mayans would take the chickens and just toss them over a net to each other. But then they found this was too humane. They decided to use large paddles to toss them back and forth. Eventually, the game evolved, boundaries were set, referees came into play, and now we have today's most popular sport watched on ESPN Ocho, chicken tossing. <laughs> now, as you can see, Brazil is usually a great contender. However, this year they were knocked out in the early rounds by Turkey. <laughs> Time. <laughs> well done. Can I get a suggestion for a plastic thing that you would throw away almost as soon as you bought? Spork. Spork. Top of a salad thing. Anything made in China. Anything made in China. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Mikey, and welcome to the Italian house of Chinese goods. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you need anything made in plastic or plastic-like materials, come to me. I'm not exactly sure how we do this stuff, but I'm gonna make it up for you anyway, and you're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. <laughs> so anyway, we take these plastics, right? And we take these molds, and they blow air into them, and poof, there's your fucking things, okay? So what do you need? You need straws, you need plastic bunnies, you need ears for your pet. It's like, I can do anything you want. And if you run out of things to think about with plastic, well, let me tell you, I have a list as long as you can even imagine. I thought you also like to know that plastic is really helpful for the environment. There is a, actually a very large continent that has just been created, especially because of plastics. Stop, time. 
Nice. Very good. That was good. I like the character. Good job. I love the go-to Italian. <laughs> yeah, right? Can I get a suggestion of a kind of art? You make a lot of money. Uh, uh, pop art. art. <laughs> uh, colorful. Graffiti. Uh, um, art. Cuban art. Uh, fruit art. Oh, I graphic hear design. Art. I heard... Hamburger sculpting. Anime. I heard, hear, heard hamburger sculpting. I heard that too. How could you not hear that? Bonjour! <laughs> Welcome to our lovely hamburger sculpting display here at the Museum du Paris. <laughs> we first got, began doing this form of hamburger sculpture when we visited the United States, where there were several large hamburgers with legs walking around the town. <laughs> we were inspired by this because we said, there's never been anything so bizarre, and we are French. So that's saying a lot. We transported these hamburgers via airplane to Paris, where they were unloaded from the large cabin where they had been enjoying many, many fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Time. Yeah! <laughs> 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 well done, well done. Good hustle, good hustle. Yeah, they do. What? Should we do it again? Uh, One more time? Somewhere. Do it. <laughs> One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time.